Hello, everybody. Um, we're starting the recording for the React class. Um, we've got a, a few of us in here uh, in the chat. Um, and we've done some quick intros and just uh, kind of walked through uh, some, some newer people about you know our process of learning. But we're going to go through free code camp with uh, React. And uh, we're glad you're here. Um, I know CJ is going to be joining us probably through the recording. So hello to CJ and whoever else. I think Austin as well is going to be joining us. Um, but um, the way that we usually do the learning is we just go lesson by lesson through Free Code Camp. And if anybody at all is, st is stuck or doesn't understand anything, um, you know, I would highly encourage you stop the stop the meeting and you know speak up because uh, we won't know that you're not understanding unless you say something um, and um, you know don't don't feel ashamed or embarrassed we're all newbies here so um, there have been plenty of times where I have not understood and I said something and I'm really glad that I did because there's been other times where I didn't understand and I didn't say something and I only got further and further behind and um, it, uh, it only gets that much harder, <laughs> you know, if you're behind to say something. Um, so uh, it's best to just say it early and as often as you need to, uh, don't feel ashamed. Um, you know, I will probably be the first one to be doing that myself. So, um, and, um, more than likely somebody else has that very same question. Exactly. The group are watching the video, so you'll be helping <clears> them out. And if you're watching the videos um, as a recording, I'd highly encourage you uh, not to just passively watch us do the videos and do the lessons. Um, you know, pause the video, try to do the lesson on your own without us, and then if you're stuck and you need, you know, kind of some some help, then I'd highly encourage you to um you know watch the video but then make sure that you understand it yourself before you move to the next lesson um, that will uh, only help you and it and the learning only takes place if you're actively doing all of the lessons yourself um, don't just passively uh, sit there and do nothing uh, well the other people are learning um, you're you're only hurting yourself so um, this is like hands-on, practical, um, you know, engaged learning. Um, that's the best way to learn, and that's that's the only route that we go in our learning. Um, but without further ado, um, I dropped this in the link, and I'm going to put this in the uh, description of the YouTube channel, or the YouTube uh, description. Uh, but uh, I created this uh, GitHub repo, and um, now I'm going to create a workspace on my computer. I haven't done so already. And I'm going to get this in there. Okay. All right. So let's jump out. Let's go to CD. Uh, sorry, let me jump out of these. CD. Okay. All right. Let's come back here and. I'm actually going to create uh, an index.html. So we've got one. Um, um, so I'm going to let me do it there. Uh, let me just set one up here. Uh, 
right, there's something in there. Which may not be the best way to do that, but I'm just gonna set it up. So that's going to be on the master. All right, I'm going to clone this. Get clone. All right, now. to CD React. So yeah, <clears throat> I'd highly suggest uh, forking this repo. Uh, so if you know you, you've accessed this link, go ahead and fork it to your your GitHub, and then from there you should be able to, uh, you know go through the processes that I just went through. Um, it, make sure that you've got Git already set up. If you don't, then um, <clears throat> please look at some of our other tutorials on our YouTube channel or um, uh, you know, ask us in the chat, how, you know, could somebody walk me through Git and uh, GitHub? And you know, I'm sure one of us would be happy to set up a time to meet with you to walk you through it. But um, uh, all I did was I set up a git clone and then I dropped in the link that I, uh, I copied through the clipboard icon. And then from there, uh, well, first I made sure I was in my W3 develops projects folder within the command line in the terminal that uh, my, my directory was set up. I was in another directory actually working on something else. And so I needed to make sure that I was in this, the workspace that I wanted to drop the folder in. And uh, it went through those processes, it unpacked it, and it placed it into the W3 dev projects folder for me. And then I accessed it through changing the directory. And then now I'm in that folder and everything that I have on my GitHub uh, repo, those three files, are now on my computer. Uh, and I know that because I can come here and I can look at those because they're right here. So now I'm gonna set up that workspace so that I can work out of that within all right so uh, I can get rid of that one because I don't need to save that but this one I do want to work out of this one Okay, all right, so that information I, I popped in there. Um, <clears throat> and I'll add in a script. All right, let me do this, script. And now I'm gonna save this. And yeah, so I've, I'm set up there. Now, yeah, now I think, is everybody up with me here? They forked their repo and uh, they, they have something in their terminal that they're working through. 
Is everybody with me there? Yeah, I just fork yeah. it and I'm trying to push it on. We, we all caught. Yeah, okay. And I'll basically just say something like um, React, uh, free code camp, section, uh, yeah. And oh. okay, I think this is the first lesson, but I'll make sure that I'm there. So one thing I want to point out, Elliot, about putting React in the HTML file is uh, React <clears throat> is dependency based. So like JSX, when you type in JSX, it'll only mm -hmm. run if you're able to import uh, the rest of the React library. Okay. So is there something that I should do differently? <clears throat> or should I put it in a JS? Well, when setting up a React file, like the way I've done it, I've used a uh, node package manager and set up react files like that because it's pretty much hands off. Um, it'll set up all your dependencies and everything you need just by, you know, one line in the terminal. Um, it takes a little while to, to, to get it to install everything. Cause it installs a lot of stuff. I mean, it installs like stuff like Webpack and Babel and all this other stuff as well. Um, but it's pretty much, plug and play as far as like react is concerned would they have to do like an npm install yeah yeah um, there is one uh, create react app script that you can easily scaffold on your local system would that be um create react app would i find that here yeah yeah, get started? yeah yes mm -hmm. get started installation or something i want to say I have Node installed. Okay, so but each of these steps. Okay. So it'd be something like this within the script. Um, in a way, uh, that's like pulling it from an external, uh -huh. like kind of like yeah. bootstrap, you know, like you use an external, yeah. um, JavaScript file when you use like something like bootstrap. Um, that's what that is doing. Um, okay. I've never used react like that, but I mean, try it out. I thought there was a – go back to the getting started part, Elliot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, scroll down a little bit. There was one that said step-by-step. Step. Scroll down. Yeah, that – can you can you pass a little bit up? Download this HTML file. That, that file has all the scripts. A little bit down. Nah. Okay. Can you yeah. see – I noticed this one. This yeah. one? No, no, no. There is a, a simple a, HTML. Down, no, no. There is download this HTML file. You just pass it. I did. Up, oh, up. okay, okay. Under tutorial, it's under tutorial. Up. This is the way I I, I use oh, it. Oh, you gotta go to the very uh, end, so. Oh yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah, and just and scroll down. And that's like pretty much step by step what you have to do to get um, set up for the tutorial. Mm -hmm. You know what's messed up about their sidebar? It's like you notice if you go <laughs> on their sidebar, right? It's like it doesn't, you can't scroll down on their sidebar. This oh, it, I guess you can. I can't though. Well, if it, if it doesn't pass the bottom of your screen, you, you shouldn't have to scroll down. 
what it does though like it passes the bottom of my screen hmm. interesting mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the laptop i don't have that scroll wheel and you ain't got you a mouse yet didn't we discuss this before <laughs> <laughs> get you a mouse with a scroll wheel <laughs> not yet man i'm getting there <clears throat> Should get a laptop with a scroll wheel. Okay. Dan Abramov. That's the guy, right? That <clears throat> is kind of like Mr. React. Yeah, I just shared on the message if that the uh... The HTML part. Okay. Yeah, that's the funny thing about React is your HTML is usually just a div with an ID, and that's all that's in your HTML. Okay. Well, then I'll probably just. This is what we use. I'll probably just swipe this, and um, thanks for sharing this. I would say let's start with this then. Um, as the starting point, yeah. Um, you know, I'm just gonna replace all this. So, if you've got that, then it's gonna be incorrect. If you've already forked it, um, I'm just gonna be replacing it with this and just saying uh, that this is our React. Uh, free code camp. For W3 develops. And let's go ahead and save that. And let me see if I can push that. Okay, so from here, uh, push uh, the hello world. And then, boom. All right, so I just push that to my GitHub. So now when I refresh, yeah, there's my push hello world. And everything that we just made the changes for, yeah, it's all here. So now if you fork this, uh, you'll get this template file and we'll be working from this. So I'd highly recommend creating a new branch from here. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so I'd get branch. So I'd get branch Elliot playground. Yeah, you can call your, uh, I wouldn't work in the master on your fork even. I would just create like a, a new branch. Yeah, so it's always gonna have a production branch, so you should like have a master branch. And yeah, a production. yeah. I'm just gonna create a playground branch so that I can just, if I break it, I break it, and it's not gonna mess with the the hello world that's live. Um, but I'm gonna check it out. And when you get to a company, usually they have like three branches. They'll have like a master branch, a production branch, and then they'll have like a like another branch that you push to before you get the, the and like uh, for like review for the other yeah. teammates. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Like everybody else pushes to, which is at the bottom, and then the 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 manager will have the the middle branch, which is the production branch, and then then he'll push to the master. Okay. Have have each of you guys used this uh, the helpful source control panel? that I just worked in here. I've never used it. It's really helpful. Um, Mesfin and I, uh, we've been working out of this. Um, but basically, um, let me 
to something. Or I can say, I don't know, I'm just gonna say. So what resources are we gonna be going? Are we gonna use freecodecamp and reactjs.org? Um, let's work with, within freecodecamp. I just, I kind of have a parallel, like what I've been doing with the other JS group is I just work parallel with, um, with the content within FreeCodeCamp and then I just drop a snippet of that code into, uh, into my editor. So then, you know, I've got something pushed and committed from FreeCodeCamp. Okay. And then that, you know, that shows up on my heat map that shows my progress, you know, and, and I kind of just like toy around with it, you know, and work in my playground on my editor. So then, you know, I feel more comfortable with it rather than just, you know, I'm just passively doing it right. in the console on free code camp. This, yeah. you know, working within it within my own editor, it gives me more confidence in knowing that I really know what I'm talking about, at least in terms of that thing. No, I think and, it's more, more real. Yeah, and it's more real because it's like I have a benchmark of like, okay, I can go back to that version of the code to the very lesson that I was working on, <clears throat> you know, so. Um, okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna just test that out. And <clears throat> Nesson, what was the uh, command to to get this to pop up? Do you remember that? <clears throat> Sorry, what do you want to do? If they're wanting to get this source control to pop up for the first time. Um, you commit on the right. If you commit, then you should go down here. What was that mess with? Nothing down here to the sink. The sink? Yeah, yeah just but... If they've never done it before, wasn't there a command that they need to access? Like control shift P or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, shift command P. Command shift P. Yeah. And then. Uh, clone. There was. Maybe clone. you should go down. Get clone. Yeah. And then. And they should name the repository. Area. Okay. But I've already done that. Right. So, yeah. But yeah, so command shift P clone and then once you paste in your URL. Yeah. You click enter and then it should pop it up here. Right? Right. Okay. Now you already clone. Now you are on your lookup machine. Your project is already in your lookup machine. Right. <clears throat> so everything is set now. Right. But and then I made a change, so then it would be okay. it would it it skips the step of get add, and I think it'll prompt you to say like, uh, do you want to fetch? You would say yes. Um, okay, then come down here, and then just the, the the left corner down down here. Yeah, I'm gonna make a comment like yeah, um, just to added H one, and then I click this little check mark. Yeah. And then when I do that, yeah, click that one. Then yes. I click I click in here because I'm in the Elliot Playground branch. Yeah. So I need to publish the changes. And it's syncing. And I think I think it synced. But let me make sure it did. Yeah, because the three went away. I okay. had I had three changes. And now when we Come to this file now that I refresh it. There's going to be a a div for the oh, this is the master though. That's why it's not. Yeah, I changed that branch. I got to go to the Elliot playground. If I come to the Elliot playground, then we'll see that that test is right there. Okay. So I'm synced up, but have. Have you used that, Pat? Have you used this side panel? No, I don't use uh, VS Code. I use Atom, but Atom uh, has something similar to that. Ah, uh, okay. Did that make sense, John? Oh, um, I'm sorry. I'm on my own. What did you just do? 
<clears throat> I was working within this uh, source control side panel. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, I use the uh, command line. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I, I don't that at all. <coughs> I'm actually working on, I'm, I'm typing the commands in the command line right now as we speak. <laughs> okay. This is helpful because it, uh, it, it basically skips a bunch of steps and I've, I've, I've stopped using the command line, so to speak, as much. I still use it, you know, to do certain things like checking out the branch, mm -hmm. but um, just to do like simple changes, like, you know, if I added another one, like an H2, and I said, Elliot, you know, something like that, and then I saved it. Now, all I would say is, so it has my change here, and then I'll just say, added Elliot, then I click this little check mark. And so now it's showing this little one. Mm -hmm. Then I click sync. And now that's already posted on my GitHub now. Really? Oh, with, wow. with three, like just three things. Add in a message, click the check mark, and then that. And I'm, I'm on GitHub already. No, I don't know how you did that. That is really cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, see? I just put I just put that Elliot. Wow, that's convenient. In the matter of like, like second, fifteen dude. seconds, I just did that. Yeah, like Adam has that built in as well, where you just click <clears throat> commit and then click push, and it automatically pushes it up without yeah. having to do it in the terminal. Yeah, like I'll, I'll do a p. P. Um, Wait, did you just show us how to set that up? Like, how hey, John. Work? Yeah, yeah, you do command shift P and then you type in clone and you should get that pop up. And then what you would need to do is take your repository. So um, the repository would be from here. I think you would need to take the URL from the actual repository page, like the, the code page. Mm -hmm. And then you would copy that drop it in here and I, I don't think it's going to do any, well, I don't think it's going to do anything because I'm already set up, but you just click enter and then it would prompt you through some steps. Like I think you would need to tell it that you want it to fetch as well. And uh, <coughs> it will ask the, the location. Where do you put yeah. the project in your computer, in your local machine? Yeah. Oh, like Directory, what folder do I put it in? Yeah. I mean, we can walk you through it if you want real quick. Um, yeah, I do. Let me. Because I'd imagine, I'm imagining CJ and some others, they're going to want to see this as well. All right, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, I'm still seeing, after cloning, I'm still seeing the previous one, not the updated one. Yeah, you, <coughs> then you have to sync. You have to sync. Okay. No, I mean the previous one. Uh, when I fork. I'm gonna stop sharing and why don't why don't one of you, Jamal or John, why don't you guys share your screen and then um, okay. Nesvin and I we can kind of like walk you through this just to like. Share my screen because I'm gonna start from the beginning, right from the fork. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And where is this? Uh, where do we put this? Where, oh, the link is right here in community chat. All right. Okay, DK, DK saying his network is bad. Oh, man. Sorry, we're going to have the video for him. Yeah, I'm just telling you we're recording. Nice. <clears throat> All right, I'm joining the Zoom on my computer right now. I'm on my phone. Here I go. All right, where is the link? Wait, let me mute myself. Hello, hello. Oh, to the repo. Uh, it's in Zoom chat. Yeah, it's in the Zoom chat. Um, oh, it is, all right. Let me plug my phone in right quick before it dies when I'm on the Zoom. All right, I'm ready. Uh, uh, you got the GitHub. No, would you would you guys post the repo again? Because uh, like you know when you just joined it. Yeah, Zoom? I got it. I got it right here. Okay. Um, 
two seconds. Uh, where did it go? Okay, there's the chat. All right, I'm gonna drop it in again. Yeah, check, check your chat. I'm there. All right. <clears throat> <coughs> oh wait, I wouldn't want to clone it. I would want to fork it first and then I would want to clone it. Yeah, you could go that route. You you may have already. Yeah, I'll just delete it. All right, I'm there. <coughs> yeah, you can just remove it. Just tab. There is one npm package that uh, removes anything you want. Rim rough. I don't know. If you know. I got it. It's <laughs> R space dash r, and then it'll it'll remove it. Yeah. Right, I'm going yeah. Just go ahead and fork it mm -hmm. to your uh, to your workspace. Did you fork it? Or are you gonna clone it again? No, I, I forked it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now, how do I do what you're saying? Okay. Uh, I think you need to jump down into your. No, he already cloned it. Your CD. You need a CD into your workspace, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just click tab. Yeah, and I have a few. I have a few React projects on there already. <laughs> a few, few projects called React something. I gotta put that React dash in there. Yeah, click LS. Make oh, sure. No, I'm, you're... I'm in there now. Yeah. Yeah, you're in there. <coughs> okay. Now, um... <clears throat> open this project on your new Visual Code. Yeah, go to File. Add folder to workspace. And then uh, navigate to that folder, the, the, the clone folder. The React W3 develops. Yeah, there you go, add. And then I think you just click add here. Add. All right, now, yeah, so now it's popped up there. Now command shift P. Uh, before that, can you check the index HTML content so that? Yeah, click on index HTML and under React. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. Weird. <laughs> For yeah. me, it's the old one still. What the the hello world? Yeah, the hell, the, yeah, the previous. Yeah, this is the master. Uh, this Maybe you need to fork again, like remove the previous one from your machine. Oh, fork a new one to your, to your repo, to your GitHub again. I can fork I again. I can just change the contents yeah. to the uh, contents that you had pasted in earlier, right? Hello? Would you uh, remember what you had pasted in the chat before? to enter into the uh, index.html. Would you put that back in the chat so I can copy that and paste it in here? Oh, the raw GitHub? Yeah. It, it'll be on that, that on the GitHub, John. Just go to Techie or Elliot's uh, GitHub and go to his branch and you just copy it right off the index. Oh, from the, the playground? Yeah. I oh, you want that version? 
that's what he was just um that's what somebody was just telling me to do right uh i mean there's not much different there all i did was just add stuff within the div whatever's in that div I'll, that's all i added i didn't add anything within the script i think all i changed was the 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 head title and the div you see those h1s and h2s like that's all i added okay. but that's not relevant. That's just garbage text. Like I'm just like, I was just doing an example. Okay. What should I, what should I do next? <clears throat> I think, I think you're good. I think what you should do is check out. Um, you should, uh, get check out and then, or you should, you should create a new branch actually get branch. Get branch and then just name a branch that you want to name. Yeah. And then check that branch out. Yeah. And then, yeah, now you're working in that branch. So now you have that change and you can push that to your GitHub now, I think. Like, uh, if you make, you like, you make changes to that. Yeah. So that little blue bar at from line 13 to 17. So save that and then do command shift P. And then clone, type clone. No, 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 he don't need to do that. He doesn't need to. Because this is just to clone the Git project into his machine. Now already the machine is running the, the ah, project okay. is running on his machine, so he don't have to do that. Okay. So you didn't have to. Okay, so now I think you can just click on that number one where there's like a little branch on the side panel for the, yeah, the little blue branch. one at the top, uh, the side left where there's a number one, there's a blue one. Is there, I see higher. That. It's much higher. Oh, higher. Right. Yeah, click that. Now um, just type in initial commit or I don't know, just whatever. And then click that little check mark that's above it. There are no stage changes. Okay, so make some kind of change to the... No, no, no. Oh, should he have said always there? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I didn't commit yet. Yeah, now, yeah. now you can do it. Yeah. Oh, uh, should oh should I keep, okay? Click yeah. The check mark. Now say always. Would you automatically like to stage all your changes? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Now go to that little cloud next to the production. Click on that, and it's syncing now. And once that's done, moving, then you should be able to go to your GitHub and there's that simple change that you just made. Uh, there's that, uh, would you like code to periodically run git fetch? Uh, that's handy if you say yes, then if you did any changes within your editor in GitHub, then those changes would then show up in your code here in your editor. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I got to set this up for the W3 developers repo. Yeah, but um, yeah, so basically if you went to GitHub now, that little change that you made, getting rid of that extra space, that would be take, like it would be gone. So if you switched out of, yeah, yeah there's your production uh, branch. Yeah. So now if you switch out of the master branch and you switch over to that production branch, now that index HTML, it's going to reflect that you got rid of that space. Yeah. And now any of the changes that you make in your index HTML, uh, they're going to be reflected. Oh, okay. You know, as, as soon as you save, then you type in your message, you click the check mark, and then you click the little arrow wheel, then you're synced. So it's just three steps. That's 
Super simple. It's a little simpler than working within the command line. Yeah, dude, type quick, quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could still, you could still use a command line. Um, yeah, why would you want to, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's helpful, like, I mean, to know how to use the command line. Definitely. It's not like you're gonna forget how to use it, but. It's also helpful to know how to do this too. <clears throat> this is like, you know, just another step on top of, you know, you have your terminal within VS Code, but you also have your Git and source control within VS Code as well, too. Thank God for automation. It's like driving instead of walking. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just a little, little, I mean, I don't know. Not everybody does it that way, but. A lot of people don't know how. A lot of people I mean, I didn't know how it. until Metzman showed me this little trick, so uh, thanks to him. <laughs> So I didn't even have to use that control shift P. Uh, I guess you didn't if you just used the command line. Clone. Yeah, yeah, but that one is just clone. <laughs> you did it in terminal, you don't need to do it again. Okay. Okay. If I, if I didn't realize that. Okay. If I, if I didn't clone it and I had created it, like if I had pushed it to GitHub off my computer itself, like would there have been a different process? I think you could use command shift P if you want, like, uh, if you wanted to use get clone without using your terminal, uh, and you just wanted to use your editor, mm -hmm. then um, you could use command shift P clone. Oh, and that would have cloned it. And that would have okay. cloned it, yeah. Because you're oh, dropping your, your, you're doing get clone, but you're just doing it through command shift P clone mm, rather than get clone. Got it, got it. Thank yeah, you it's the same thing, but but anyhow. You want to share now? Yeah, I think I think we can now start. Um, sorry, it's taking us a little longer. Uh, DK, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. DK, what's up, homie? I'm good. Yeah. Just give me, let me uh, try to get my um my headphones. Yeah, we're just about to start start free code camp. Um, oh, you know what? For uh, React, we're gonna start free code camp. But uh, rather than go over everything, I just suggest watching the uh, recording. Um, for uh, the the Git and GitHub section that we went over. And uh, All you gotta do right now is you just got to clone the uh, project. Yeah, go to. Um, oh, Paz, what's up? Actually, yeah, John's here too. Hey, DK, it's been a while. It's been a while. Where have you been? I've yeah, been around, man. <laughs> just not in the study groups. <laughs> go to this. Go to that repo there uh, that I just posted in the Zoom chat. Okay, okay. Let me check. And just fork that. And create create your own branch instead okay. of the master. <sighs> but so what what are, what are you guys doing? Nothing really. They uh, they showed me, they were showing me how to use a a freaking awesome uh, feature on VS Code. But besides that, we haven't started yet. So you came at the perfect time. Oh, yeah. I thought I missed everything already. No, you didn't miss anything, dude. You're, nah, right on time. you're okay. Cause, yeah, because more I, I, I woke up a little bit late because, you know, it's like early morning here already. So, yeah. Uh, I woke up how, about, about 30 that's, minutes um, late. That's how I am with the uh, JavaScript group. Because <laughs> it's like five o'clock in the morning. For that. <laughs> but uh, this is like. 10 o'clock at night for me, so. <laughs> I, was saying, I think it's better so, for you. It's totally it's 4 30, 4 30, like in between, so it would be like very hard for me to make it early every, every now and then. But I'll try my best yeah. so I can make up. Make up yeah, it's minutes. okay. I'll try to record and, you know, some days I may not be here, so uh, that's why. I understand now, like, that's why I, I want try to, uh, all of us to be here. I try to like um, um, make up and like come um, um, make up for the class every night because not, not everybody will be around for the class every time. So like, someone should be able to like, coordinate. Like, I 
at least one of us should be able to like be online like from time to time. Yeah. So we could, like would need the whole thing. Yeah. Probably after yeah. this, whoever wants to be able to record, uh, it's probably a good idea to have one of us, other than me, know how to record, so that that way it at least gets recorded and yeah. pushed to the W three develops uh, YouTube page. But anyhow, we can talk about that after. Uh, just let me know when it's your fork, DK. And um, uh, I'm trying to clone. Uh, I I can't fork the uh, the the report, and I'm trying to clone into my um, local computer so I can work with you from there. Okay. Uh, we're we're gonna be on free code camp, right? We're not gonna be on React JS Network. Okay, no problem. I'm just yeah. trying to. I'll, I'll, I'll talk we, like, uh, with you guys. I mean, I'm up for suggestion, but it's whatever you, a group as a group we think is helpful. I think it. it well, well, I I I, I I I just completed like the um, the frequent camp um, um, module for React. Uh, I think on, on Wednesday, or so. So I think we should do that. Right? You think we should do the free code camp module? Yeah, just try to like we should try to like um, uh, get that out to do it like for like the first few days of like of the, of the class, and we can move to any other thing after I was like. That's, I think that's a good foundation for it for, for like the first few of um, this thing for React. Then, because when I when I get it go when I when I finish going to like the module, when I went back to like the tutorial on like the uh, official site like, for React, it was not really. It was not really confusing for me because most of those things I've went through them. I was able to like uh, understand like the processes and uh, like code like easier than, than yeah. I expected. So okay, then I, th I think that's where we'll start, and then yeah. Like, and if if I can make a suggestion real quick, I mean you don't have to do it in the in the meeting, but go to Scrimba, click on the React yeah. tutorial, and watch the first three lessons. Those okay. were like. The biggest thing for me when I first started learning with React, because it like really explains what React is. Yeah, right? I like Scrimba. Uh, I, I've done the intro to JS and I've started the ES6. But Scrimba is good though. Um, um, John. John, Jonathan. I'm here. Like, how is um, JavaScript going? Like, have you done anything else since yesterday? Oh yeah, yeah. We worked uh, from like seven to like uh, eleven thirty tonight. Oh, that's that's great. That's great. Yeah, so, Pat um, saved my butt today, bro. Freaking, we were stuck on one problem all day, bro. All day. <laughs> hey, all right, all right. It's all right. Just take your time. Just take your time. Okay, just pick up my my um. <laughs> hey, DK. Just pick up my uh, my. Are you ready? Yeah, my branch on the on the repo. So I would, let me just push it. Oh, I okay. Can just, yeah. <coughs> yeah, we'll go ahead and we may not go too much longer because this video is going to be really, really long. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can always you can always put it like uh, the most the most of part now. What's that? So you can always cut the video to like a oh, few thousand parts are not really um, necessary to like uh, post. So you can reduce like the length of the video. Always, you, know like, what you, can, you know what you can do in the in the uh, in the description. You can put a time when we actually started the React part. Yeah, so like, or I I could parse it out. Um, yeah. Doesn't the studio allow you to cut parts out? So, but it's never worked for me. It always okay. is updating, but it's never actually updated. I always had to use like a outsource outside editor. Yeah, I might toy around with it. But anyhow, is everybody ready for us to go through the first lesson? Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead. Nice and Jamal, you guys with us? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, good deal. All right. Uh, DK, you ready? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, all right. So we're gonna create a simple JSX element. Intro, React is an open source view library created and maintained by Facebook. It's a great tool to render the user interface UI 
of modern web applications. React uses a syntax extension of JavaScript called JSX that allows you to write HTML directly within JavaScript. This has several benefits. It lets you use the full programmatic power of JavaScript within HTML and it helps keep your code readable. For the most part, JSX is similar to the HTML that you have already learned. However, there are a few key differences that will be covered throughout these challenges. For instance, because JSX is a syntactic extension of JavaScript, you can actually write JavaScript directly within JSX. To do this, you simply include the code you want to be treated as JavaScript within curly braces. Curly brace uh, string, this is treated as JavaScript code. Keep this in mind since it's used in several future challenges. However, because JSX is not valid JavaScript, JSX code must be compiled into JavaScript. The, com the, trans the transpiler Babel is a popular tool for this process. For your convenience, it's already added behind the scenes for these challenges. If you happen to write syntactically invalid JSX, you will see the first test in the challenges fail. It's worth noting that under the hood, the challenges are calling React DOM dot render open paren JSX comma document dot get element by ID open paren string root close paren close paren this function call is what places your JSX into React's own lightweight representation of the DOM React then uses snapshots of its own DOM to optimize updating only specific parts of the actual DOM. All right, so was there anything in that that didn't make sense to anybody? Yeah, hold on, I'm just trying to learn. Like it. What was that, DK? DK? So everybody's good on that point? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody's okay with that point? Yeah, I'm good, dude. Yeah, it's just rendering JSX by the document ID root which I think if we go to our code snippet, it has that example here. This information here within the script. So it's rendering uh, this information. It's rendering it into the HTML here. So actually I could I could actually do this instead of having hello world because it's going to go to the root. So what could be happening is I could be putting this, you know, this is my lesson, the first challenge that we're starting with. And instead of rendering hello world, what I want to render is the first challenge for a free code camp. Um, I don't know. This is just me just toying around with it. But it's basically the same thing. It's, you know, a Babel type and react dom dot render. And so this is going to render this HTML inside this div is basically what's happening. Is, is that correct, Pat and DK? That's basically yeah. what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can run it uh, on the HTML. Like do you have live server and you oh yeah i do okay then run this html then you see that okay let me go live yeah so if i go live and, uh, then it's gonna render 
Oh, I'm still live with this other project uh, that I was working oh, on. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, you gotta close that port. Open it back up. No, nah, one second. Let me. I hate all these things that pop up. How do I close that out? I've forgotten how. You close it. So close, go live, and then open it back up. So it gets done closing. Hello, guys. So my network is still uh, like as sushi as before, so I'm, I'm barely um, hanging on here. I'm really sorry. Did we lose you? I think yeah, my network is shit, so I'm like, um, barely hanging on here. So I have like mm. so much. Yeah. Okay. Go back uh, to your uh, web browser. Elliot? Yeah. What What's running on your 5500 port? It's running, um, it's running this. Oh, hold on. Let me get out of this. You, you, you would probably want to close that. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think I have to. Let me pull it up again. I think it's whatever page you're on when you click go live. That's the page that's going to be Like, uh. Come with me. Okay. Let me post this. Now let me jump back over here. When you push that, they can open that. Commit, right? What's that? Yeah, that just committed. Um, uh, when I went to the conference, I went to a workshop the day before the conference, and that's what was live. Was uh, uh, it was a web component that was a button that I created using web components without any kind of React. Um, uh, no, no React, it was only uh, HTML web component. But it created a button that was a, a timer and it was uh, uh, an incrementing button. Okay, but I'm gonna go live. Let's see what that does. No, it's still doing that spell, that HTML. Hmm. Yeah, because we, we did a spelt uh, JS. Close the other, close the other page. Then. <clears throat> or, or you can kill the process if you. Okay, I'm just gonna hop out of that. And you can just you can right click on the actual file. And just open I'm gonna it. close that repository. Now. Let's see what it does. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. What's that HT? Uh... Let's go live now. No, it's still connected to that one. Dude, what's that HTTPS yeah. uh, folder that's open at the, the, the left? Uh, like you have to them? kill first the process. Like, mm. if you go to your terminal. Then... Uh, yeah, net uh, for stats, the port. Yeah, net, net stats. You can just listen. Like net stats. Net uh, stats <laughs> together. Like net stats. Net st. Yeah, yeah. Net stats. Uh, remove the s. Net stats. Uh, space. Yeah, yeah. Dash space. Yeah. Minus t u l p n. T U L T U L P L. Yeah. P N, yeah. Yeah, now you can see like which port is running. It's not showing me a port, it's saying unknown or uninstrumented protocol. Net stat like 
this is what I've typed in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's correct. Yeah. What kind of browser do you, do you use Firefox or Google Chrome? Chrome. Yeah. Do you have Firefox downloaded? Um, no. Okay. What are they going to do? Or you can also, do, is it possible to open the HTML directory, like the path without the port? Can I change the, uh, can I change the, the port number? number? Yeah, I think possible. I should be able to change the port number, right? Like I can change it to like 3000 or something, right? Yeah. Well, shouldn't I be able to change the port number? Yeah, there is a way to change. Let me see. Uh, I, like, I should be able to customize the port. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to to a different port other than this 5500. Zero, zero. I'm trying to change the port. Is it possible to run in your terminal live server if you install it globally, like live server? Can you write live server? Um, yeah, let's see. No, one, dash. No, one word? Dash, dash, yeah, dash. Yeah, dash. Then dash P, you can forward port, dash P, then write 3000. Live server. Dash, dash P. Then 3000. Space? 3000. Yeah. Yeah. Then this. Command then. not found. It's saying live server not found. Should I? Yeah, you have to install it globally, NPM. Um, so. Setting up, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. You think this will work, Mesfin? Uh I think so. Like if, if you yeah, install. install. <coughs> okay. Okay, I'll give this a shot then. Take a while, or it shouldn't take too long. Uh, shouldn't take. Uh, if you press a control, uh, uh, command B, I think that'll open up. Uh, it'll open up the HTML in your default browser. Okay. What was that? Command B. Yeah, but you have to be on the HTML file. You have two HTML index.html files. You might have to. For portfolio one, close portfolio one. Yeah. And for certain, for random circles that HTML, close port no, the tabs at the top of your uh, VS Code. The ta yeah. The tabs, those tabs. It's not. It's not even pulling from those though. I know. I don't even know what this is. Okay. All right. Click five now. And then if that doesn't work, just press control. Yeah. Yeah, it's still it's still connected to this other project. Yeah. <laughs> and then press uh, command B and see what happens. What are you guys looking? Okay. You're trying to change the port for like the server you're using, right? Yeah. Can I say how you launch the how you launch the server? 
or or I maybe can, <laughs> you can close VS Code and open <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, it's oh. an extension for VS Code, or it's yeah. like this. Let me push this change then. What happens if you click the settings down there in the bottom right, where it says server started at port 5500? What happens if you click the gear icon in that little box? Oh, it like just went away. Here. Yeah, close. hit that, Elliot. Close the server? Yeah, yeah. close the server. And then open it again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Click, click the settings. Gear. Configure. Yeah, manage. manage. Yeah. But that's what I've been looking at. Oh, okay. And it doesn't tell you in there where it changed. One second. How do you how do you go about launching the? Uh, okay. Um, is this your system or Elliot? I don't know what this is. Sorry. Okay. I think you just close the VS Code and. Then yeah, you can try closing VS Code and. Okay. I'm gonna do that. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Oh, what, oh, how do you how do you launch the server? He just clicks it's go no live. Oh, you have to go live. This. Okay. Okay, let me. Uh, challenge. Should be able to change the, the port number. Just put this here. So that this gets pushed. Okay, now I'm going to close it. No, I, don't. I think this is good. I'm not going to say it because it's going to be pushed. Uh, so. This one, yeah, everything's pushed, so I'm all good. Okay. <laughs> Close this one. Okay, let me pull it back up. What yeah. environment are you guys using for? It's working. Um, for yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what what like, what environment are you guys using? Are you guys using CDN or using of Node.js to create the app? No, we are using CDN. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this is yeah beautiful an example. <laughs> uh, your, your first your first real program. <laughs> yeah, that is. I don't know why. After I'm one hour. Yeah, that was my first uh, React DOM render. React DOM render, and then it threw some H H1 in there. So yeah. it was accessing this div by the root. Yes. So you can add multiple. Uh, let's say J6, <laughs> for example, if you want to add two header H1, so how can we do it? Two header H1? Yeah. I, I just don't, I don't know, that's just not common practice though. No, H2. Just, just let's go through, um, people come, you understand all this better. Yeah, you'll, you'll understand it. Um, how to add multiple elements in and all that as you get right. through, go through it. The current code uses JSX to assign a div element to the constant JSX. Yeah. Place the div with an H1 element and add the text hello JSX inside it. Okay, so we need to say Place the div. 
the H1. So yeah. do I, I need to delete. I need to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Wait. Well, I think you just replace the D with H1. What question is this? Is it the second question? This is the first question. Okay. Don't I need to use React Dom dot render? Yeah. Right? But I need to I need to say but they're saying replace the div. Okay. Um instruction the current code uses JS to assign a div element to constant JS. Replace the div with an H1 element. Okay, you just have to um, replace the, I think the div, this div with an H1 element. Yeah. Okay. And add a LODSX. So um, get element okay. by. Uh, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, what you have to do is uh, replace the div tags with the H1 tag and then put J, hello JSX with the exclamation point in the middle. Elliot, Elliot. So what, just like, what, H1? what are part of, what are yeah. part of like this in the same? They're just telling you that when you add the H1 and all of that, they would actually render the, 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 um, the HTML display for you. Like you don't need to worry about the we have the render part on like on, on the um code editor. Yeah, they're running the um the react the react dump the render um underneath the whole thing for you. But I think that that's it. So this is this is it uh, for this. But, but like you can't do this on your own today because they are running some part of the code for you underneath. Uh, under the this hood. One, yes, this will ah, run directly. That's what saying. Your, okay. Your local system. They are running okay. the React or the render part on like underneath. So. Okay. You take yeah, this to your they're doing, they're doing things, things under the hood. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't this. want to like know like the business but before they okay. expose everything to you gradually. I see. Okay. Yeah. Because it's just a div, right? And then I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this this is what is there. The JSX. Yeah, that's right? a JSX. The const JSX will get the item by ID by root. So it's gonna go to that div. Okay, I see. I see what's happening. Okay, that wasn't very well explained. Though. Yeah, if you want to see that same example okay. running your code editor, you can go back to where your script is, uh -huh. right? And just above React DOM, yeah. set a variable equal to that. FCC create simple JSX element. Yeah, call this JSX, then all the whole H1. Yeah, yeah. J JSX. X. Yeah. Capital. Okay. Yeah, is equals to equals to the whole H one. Cut cut the H one the whole. Here. Yeah. Yeah, just cut that. Okay. And then I could say JSX. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And yes. And then this. Yeah. Yes. And there you go. Then this doesn't need to be in quotes. It can just be like No, no. 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 I don't, I don't. You, you can put it in a bracket. Why did you put the uh, comma after JSX? There are two variables that the render uh, method is um, yeah, yeah. Um, actually collect. There are two variables. Yes. JSX is the first variable, then the other variable is the, is the selector. Like the variable name is the first variable. Then yeah. the um, the selector is the second variable. When that takes two arguments. Oh, so he, has, so he has to put a comma after the JSX because it's a variable. Yes. Well, it's a parameter. It's an argument for a function. It's what, what what you see down there is it's running the render method from the React DOM script that's yeah. pulled in at the top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, from up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or is it from Babel? It's from Babel, right? No, Babel no, is uh, okay. changing the JSX to uh, oh, okay. HTML. Okay. Yeah, Babel okay. takes JSX and converts it to HTML and regular JavaScript. 
you, yeah. Yeah, okay, um, um, Elliot, you can put the, the HTML into a bracket. You don't have to. No, I'm just saying. So when you when the like the, the HTML you're adding is, is like you have to like break it down to like you can just use the bracket to actually make it look better. And, and uh, maybe do you want to have multiple elements? In that okay, case, one, one thing, okay, uh, Elliot, one thing you should know is that, like, on, on like, using the JSX, you have to, like, render one particular parent. You can only render more than one parent. So, anything you want to add, if you, add multiple, you have to add them within a div. Yes. div. Yeah. So, the one thing will be rendering, not, like, multiple things. So, you have to, everything must be within a container, <laughs> within a parent. So, you should be rendering one parent. If you rendering more than one parent, then... Error will be the whole thing. So if you want to add like another H1, now you have to put everything in the div. Yeah, they explain that in the in feature. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah. So there's a parent-child relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So w whenever you run a React DOM render, okay. the the opening HTML tag needs to match the closing HTML tag, or JSX tag, actually technically, but um, you learn that as you go along. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, and without a div and an ID, I guess, like if, if there was already an H1, could I, could I put another H1? Yeah, you can put that in there, but you put everything within a div. Within a div. You can't render, you can't render that yeah. too. It's got to so, render to match the div. Like, yeah, you, you have to render one particular parent. Yeah, okay. so like uh, multiple um childs can be within the parent, but you have to render one particular um parent. Okay. So yeah, you, can just try, you can try it now. Like, add it like add multiple. Add on that one. Add a div and see what happens. Then add a div. Add add everything within a div and see what happens. Right. I think you. I think you're jumping ahead just a bit, DK. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's gonna explain all that as we go along. Yeah. 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 I think that was good enough. But I appreciate it, DK. I, I'm tracking with you though. It's uh, this is good. All right, <clears throat> everybody, good. Yeah. yeah. Would, <coughs> do you wanna update also your GitHub sometime or what do you want? Uh, like uh, this. You're talking about here. Maybe if you need to commit here. Yeah. Okay. First challenge. Uh, render H1, okay. <clears throat> All right. Did everybody, everybody play around with it in the, in their own, their own yeah. playground space? Yeah. All right. We're ready to move to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and start this one. Create a complex JSX element. The last challenge was, was a simple example of JSX, but JSX can represent more complex HTML as well. One important thing to know about nested JSX is that it must return a single element. This one parent element would wrap all of the other levels of nested elements. This one parent element would wrap all of the other ele levels of nested elements. For instance, several JSX elements written as siblings with no parent wrapper element will not transpile. Here's an example. Valid JSX. So there's a div, there's three paragraphs, and yeah, so basically, these are the children and the div is the parent. Yep. Invalid is that there's no div, basically. And so there are multiple parents here. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, this is a standalone parent. This one's a standalone parent. This one's a standalone parent. Yeah. Basically, there just needs to be one. Yeah, yeah. One, one parent. 
attributes rendering one one element one like, element one element that you can be more they can be multiple elements within the but nested element is okay yeah yeah but one single element at a time can be rendered yeah okay define a new constant jsx that renders a div which contains the following elements in order okay so i guess we're just assuming that it's under the hood again and i'm going to create a div Oh, dev. You're adding multiple of um, this. You can put everything within the bracket. Just make it look good and stuff. Like, uh, like, like not, no, not uh, just a normal bracket. Not a curly bracket, a normal one. Normal. Uh, parentheses. I think you're trying to oh, say. Parent. Okay. Okay. You have to move, you move the div into the bracket. Ah, uh, I didn't do that. Div. Div. And then now we need an an H one. H one. Yep. Paragraph. Yeah, no, I know, I know the order at least. With th three allies. The three, uh, three of uh, this type. Say header paragraph. I can one. I can two. And I can one. Um. Just I can one. I can one. DK. Pat. And that's fun. Okay. Okay, um, read the notepad so you can know if there's yeah. anything else you need to add. When rendering multiple elements like this, you can wrap them all in parentheses, but it's not strictly required. Also, notice this challenge uses a div tag to wrap all the child elements within a single parent element. If you remove the div, the JSX will no longer transpile. Keep this in mind since it will also apply when you return JSX elements in React components. Okay. So if I swipe that. Let's just see. I think this should pass. Yeah. But I'm going to wait. And I'm going to throw this in my yeah, yeah. stuff Thanks. here and let's see what it does. You can just copy and paste it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look, well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, yeah, so, okay. So, let like, me swipe this. Uh, okay. You can try to check it on your, like, this thing first. Okay. Save. Let's go to my port. 
And let's see what it did. It didn't do anything to it. Okay. Okay. And go back to. Okay. Um. Uh, try to try to try to. I think. Uh, you're missing. I don't it. Know. Oh, I am. Yeah, missing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Missing this. So now, if I save. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I wonder why <laughs> here it didn't. Oh, because I didn't. Yeah, the space was too much. When I copied it, I didn't. Copy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let me commit this. Uh, uh, no, before you commit, you have to create a new HTML, otherwise, it will overwrite the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just create That's different. 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 <laughs> Copy the HTML. I've kept it in my versions, though. Ah, uh, okay. It's okay. That that's why I'm committing a lot because I'm just gonna do for every challenge. I'm just gonna have a new commit. So that, okay, you you just really care about the commit, not the source code. Yeah, yeah, it, it's okay. <laughs> okay, there's gonna be a thousand of these. So. Yeah, so you can create thousand for so it's, Yeah, it's just gonna be a not, thousand. No, it's, this is not the project. Yeah, it's just challenge. So. Okay. I'm just gonna be dark green. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the heat map now. It's going to be black for one day. <laughs> yeah. No, literally when I was at the workshop, I think I committed like 13 times. Nice. It was pretty awesome. Because I was just doing that like every like 10 minutes, I was just save, check box, like message, check box, sync, and then boom. It was like dark green by the end of the day. <laughs> Okay, all right, so we passed that one. Everybody's with us on that one. Yeah. Uh, CJ or anybody watching this, if you're stuck at this point, um, hit us up in the Discord chat. <clears throat> all right, let's do one more and then I think let's call it a day. Does that sound good with everybody? Yep, sure. <laughs> all right, everybody still have time to go through this last one? Yeah. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. React. It's morning, it's morning add, year. So. Add comments in JSX. JSX is a syntax that gets compiled into valid JavaScript. Sometimes for readability, you might need to add comments to your code. Like most programming languages, JSX has its own way to do this. To put comments inside JSX, you use the syntax curly brace, forward slash, asterisk, and then you have your comments, and then asterisk, forward slash, curly brace to close it out. To wrap around the comment text, the code editor has a JSX element similar to what you created in the last challenge. Add a comment somewhere within the provided div element without modifying the existing H1 or P1 elements. <laughs> okay. So all we need to do is add a comment somewhere. Um, okay, I'll just do that here. I'll just say, uh, okay. Oh. And then forward slash, and then asterisk forward slash. And I will say, what will I say? You can just comment or something. This is a That's the way of adding comments to um, JSX. So develops was here. <laughs> uh, I feel like some graffiti just went down somewhere. Oh well, I didn't mean to do that. I was, I was trying to save my uh, my VS code. Yeah, save in the web season. <laughs> All right. So let's run it. Yay, we passed it. Okay, I'm gonna document this in my code here. Or actually, I can I can just do this. Yeah, just add it to the top of the 
Elliot, uh, you're familiar with uh, PHP, right? A little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would recognize what it is. All right, so you know how when you drop into PHP, you use the angle bracket and the question mark? The angle bracket. Like when you're you're yeah, typing, so. yeah, you're typing in HTML and then you need to drop into PHP. Yeah. Um, it's the same way in JSX. When you do those curly brackets like that, you're telling JSX that you're dropping into JavaScript. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. For Python, uh, okay. You, okay. You, you add two curly brackets for variables. So this you just add means, curly bracket and a percentage time yeah, for because this is a multi-line. This is a multi-line comment, like in JavaScript. Just having that, right? Yeah. Right, but, but like if you were gonna do something as simple as like two plus two in JavaScript, you can you you add it to you, the, you would have to use the curly brackets. Curly brackets. Um, could, could I do this too? Yeah, well. try it, try it. No, no, I don't, I don't think that works. I don't think that works. That. It has to be the asset. No, I think if you want to do that, you won't add like the double distance behind since it's just one line. You can try that also. It's like a multi line comment, eh? Yeah, this one is a multiple line comment, then you can I just did, um, two forward slash. Hey, in JavaScript, is everything or all objects get global or local? All global, right? In JavaScript, is strictly like and they're local. I, I didn't hear what In JavaScript, are all objects global or all variables? Are, what is it? Object or variable? no? You can you can define a global variable and a local variable. It depends on how you want them, how you want it to work. If you want the variable to be available for, for like the old. <coughs> But like the old project or the old or module, then you just have to declare it as um, global. And if you want it to be available for a function, then you, no, no, you by, declare by, it as by, a local. But by, by default, though, by default, there are all variables are, are global in JavaScript, right? No, it depends where you declare where you declare the variable. If you declare within a function, then it's local. And if you declare it outside the function, then it's global. Okay. Because I was reading up somewhere, I was like, it, it was telling me that like. P it's pretty much the opposite of how JavaScript variables are declared or something. Like they're all local and then JavaScript's like all global. I don't, I, don't, yeah, I, don't I, don't, I don't think so. You just, you, it depends on where you declare it and what you want the variable. If you want the variable available to like the old program, then you can declare it outside all the functions. And if you want it to be available to like just a function, you declare within the function. <laughs> Okay. And it's going to be available for like um, in an object or a class. Then you declare within the class and all the uh, methods or, uh, or attributes within the object slash class, you um, have access to the variable. Yeah. Hmm. This discussion. So you, 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 you get what I said. In terms yeah. of like let and const and var. Mm -hmm. Like. That's something to know, like the difference. Yeah, no, those constant, constant is constant. So you, you can't change, you declare anything const, you can't change it within, you can't change it anywhere within your program. Yeah. So why variable is like, um, and like, um, is variable and let are, are more like the same thing, but there's a little difference with them. Yeah. For variable, when you declare variable, like var, you can de declare it again within your program. But if you try that with let, you throw an error. You can always reassign it, but you can't really declare a variable with let. Let, let is block scope. I, I don't know what that means, but I just, like, just trying to lay down. It just this. means... Uh, it's like local, it, like local scope. Lo local, locally within the instance in which you call it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If and you declare... Const, const is the same way, but const yeah, it, is different in that once you declared it, you can't, um, you can't declare it again. Right, and it's the same thing with let. Yeah. So like, you can var, like you can have a var x equals 10, right? Mm -hmm. And then declare var x again later on. Yeah. And it won't throw an error. But if you do yeah. let x equals 10, <laughs> and then later on do let x do something else, you're gonna get an error. Now what yeah. about const? So const, const is like, const, you can't change it within any way. You can't reassign it. When you let, you can reassign a let a variable. Like you just don't need to redeclare it. You can reassign it. When you declare variable let um, dk equals um, jammy, you can just say dk equals something else later on and there won't be an error. Yeah, like, like, you can't do that. If you declare it, after declaring it, and you've assigned it the variable. Like in this situation, variable, I, couldn't, I couldn't say jsx again. Equals. Yeah, you, you can say const jsx again, yes. Uh, John. Or you, you can't even say jsx equals anything again. Yeah, I can't do that in order to be you an error. You can't reassign it. You can't redeclare it again within your program. 
So you can't use JSX anywhere else in your code for the rest of your code. Yes. No, you can't. That sucks, dude. I mean, not that sucks, but all right. No, it but, depends on what you want the variable to do. If you want, if you, if you want it to stay the same, then you are just to train. Yeah, it helps your program because when your program yeah. gets um, but, um large and you mistake and you mistakenly like uh, you are declaring or or we are assigning a variable that you want to be constant, you want it to be constant throughout your your code. That's like comes to be like the perfect thing for you. Like you want to yeah. declare oh. a pi now, the value for pi. You know it's, it's a constant, so you just use a const to declare that you know it is the same uh, all. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. I get yeah. it. Yeah. You just want if you want to declare a constant, you want a particular variable to be constant throughout your code. Then you just use a const. Part one equals one. Yeah. Like yeah, this so would like, be okay. Like pi is is a perfect example. Like DK yes. was saying. Pi is always the same number. So yeah, if you like, set, if you want to set pi in your program as a certain number, a use a const. That way you can't even accidentally change it in the future. <laughs> if you yeah. have 2,000 lines of code, you know? Yeah, you don't want to accidentally change. So when you, when you try to change it, then you get an error and you remember, but, like, oh, okay, this is this is supposed to be a constant. So you just- something like this, you, you would be fine wanting to change W3 develops, you know, because yeah. you're in Jonathan. Before, you can always redeclare rede 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 this W three develops since it's uh yeah it's gonna be okay. But if you use let um initially, then you should try an error. Let uh let's say pad p. And and so so Because let is kind of like var as well, pat. right? Let and yeah, bar. it's same thing as well, but there's a little difference with let uh, compared to var. Pat. So that's like what's the difference? You can't redeclare. Really um a let a let variable but you can redeclare really declare a var variable did you, you get right now the, when you declare when you declare something is like the var the um the identifier then the value but mm -hmm. when you ask when you want to assign it it does the, the the identifier equals another value yeah so what let does it prevents you from reusing a variable name yeah okay. yeah that's true um oh. so like if you have let <laughs> like Pepe, like he has on mine, and you write 10,000 lines of code, and you're like, oh, well, I need another variable, and you type in var Pepe, it'll throw an error. Well, that's so really useful. useful. Yeah, yeah. That's like, those are, those are, those are things from here. We are, we are actually going to ex six already. So oh, yeah, let yeah. and const, yeah, let and const are ES6. Okay, that's the yes. newer version. Yeah, yeah there so are newer versions of let and const. Class also is ES6. Yeah, you really don't want to use var in big programs because you may overwrite something and then you yeah. like, The point is, I don't yeah. even use var again. I don't even bother. It is either let, const. Yeah. I don't use const. var again. Once you get to ES6, everything's letter const. Var just I, I, away. I don't yeah. use I don't use var. Var is just, you're just, you're just like, it's a, it's a time bomb. You, you, <laughs> you're going to, so it's just, I just tend to like ignore it. I don't use var again. Elliot, have you made it to ES6 yet? Um, parts. Um, I've gone through parts, but I need to, so I you need to learn more. The fundamentals or the basic JavaScript on free code camp. Uh, I, I'm still working through it, but. Are you like skipping sections? Are you like going from like basics to like the ES6 and then the other parts or are you like going through all in one? I mean, I've gone through Scrimba's, uh, ES6. Okay. And, but I'm still working through. Yeah, because you seem like you know more than just the what free code camps like the you know the free code camp curriculum is what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, yeah kind of. I mean, I've I've read up, you know, like I've read up, and and I talk with my mentors a lot. Like, like I told you, I went through that mock interview process, and that kind of like made me read up on stuff, you know. But let me see if well, so. Would this cause an error if I did this? Yes. So now this would error. Mm, and so, yeah. yeah, it didn't even show up. Yeah. Okay. Because so, I called let. Yo, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it even tells you duplicate declaration, pet B. I hear the bird somewhere. Oh wow! Duplicate deck. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So try try um this thing with const declare const and, re uh, and reassign it. Yeah, you oh, use, like here. change the part p variable to const so you can test uh, the, the, the use const. 
Okay. Did you draw an error? And then draw an error. const. No, no, no. Just reassign oh. it. You can reassign it. Const variable. Okay. So here. Just, yeah. Just this. Yeah, you can. You draw an error. Okay. It, yeah, the page won't even come up like that. There's an error. Yeah. It says pet p is read only. So you can you can reassign it. Okay. Cool. But yeah, this would be the way you would want to find out through the console. So you know you already, you've already declared it. You don't need to write um you already declared and assign it, so you don't need to assign it again. And you just so use the so what are you, are you starting the uh, React, uh, you started at, when I got here, it was 11.30. So that's what time I had hopped on. So what time, you're going to start the React at the same time every day? 10.30 p.m., but we won't go this long every day. This day is kind of like the jumbo class because we're trying to like yeah, I'll join you. get like set it. up. This ES6 stuff is pretty easy, and uh, I like it, man. So I'll, you know, after class, after I do my JavaScript class, I'll just come straight here. Yeah. All right, guys. I think that's going to be enough for today. Um, All right. Let's um, call it a day. Jamal, you, you shared something here, though. Uh, yeah, if you run that in uh, in the console, it, the way how I differentiate let and var it this way. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Using var within a for loop. Yeah, yeah. Then it will give you like it will it it won't it won't update the i value mm. yeah but, but if you if you, you, don't want, it to, it, it you want it to you want it to act like that there's a purpose yeah. in that right yeah yeah you don't want that to be a constant you don't want that to be uh because it needs to change for the purpose of a for loop yeah yeah yo how do you how do you check your different versions in GitHub, like in Git or with the command line or however you do it? Because I see that you're doing different versions, so I'm assuming that you you you're in the know of how to like go between versions and stuff. Just I don't know. just click on the last commit, like the comment for the last commit. Uh, click on the comment for the last commit. Where where's that at? Yeah, like go to your GitHub, uh, Elliot. Uh, hey, why don't you share your screen? All right, let, let's stop the recording. Um, and um, I may need to uh, go check on something, but uh, I'm going to stop the recording. And okay, one sec. Sorry.